you know, my four year journey from 2008 to 2012. was similar to the four-year journey between 2012 and 2016. Nathan Adrian. He has such a powerful freestyle stroke. I think this four-year journey between 2016 and 2020 doesn't necessarily mirror that. You know, I was engaged in 2017, I was married in 2018, and then I was diagnosed with cancer in the winter of 2018, 2019 time. That's a really harsh reality to swallow. I was 30 years old. I wasn't really thinking about that. When Nathan started with me in the fall of, of 2008, he had already made an Olympic team. So there was a general understanding that he had fr through his personal experiences of what it took, of, of the expectation he had of himself uh, to go and perform. And I don't think this focus has changed from what he want to accomplish. Nathan, you know, is... Uh, has had uh, the wonderful blessings of being married and, and moving to that phase of his life, and then the tough challenges of having to deal with testicular cancer. And, and I think you know those two moments in his life are, are being kind of at the opposite end of the spectrum, and I think it gives him great balance. It was the very, very end of 2018 and then into 2019 where it's just that initial diagnosis and first surgery happened. Um, and then after that, based off of pathology um, and you know where we were in terms of you know what kind of cancer it was and how far it could potentially spread, we elected to do a second surgery. I could at that point do adjuvant chemo, which means preventative chemotherapy, or we could just go on close surveillance. For me, the option was pretty clear that close surveillance was what I wanted to do. As we started to actually examine where we were at based off of all of our knowledge, um, and where we were going based off of all the treatments. The swimming definitely became something that I thought about more. It brought me back to real life. I was back in the weight room, back in the pool as, as quickly as I could. I mean, I was lifting like 10 pounds because you're on like these restrictions, but anything I could do, and that was really important to helping me ground me. I love swimming and I love competing. And I was like, this is it, like this is home. What do you love about swimming and why do you keep doing it? And if you are planning to continue towards trial, towards the next trials, why? Oh, okay, great question. Swimming has given me a family, swimming has given me friends, swimming has given me mentors that taught me values and that made me who I am today. I don't know if you can hear that bird chirping, but it's kind of kind of annoying me. Um, another big reason why I'm still swimming is because I love my teammates. I love going to the pool every day. I love goofing off with Lily. I love blowing ah. bubble rings. Hey guys. So when I first hopped in the water, there was just something about the water where it calms me. It's like my home. Like I could be having my worst day of my life and I step foot in that water and I'm happy. Practice is cool, practice is fun to like get a group of guys together and, and really see how far you can push it. But at the end of the day, like we're all in this sport because we love the race. When you go to swim meets, when you get on those blocks, you're racing seven other people. And it's like mano y mano, it's like who wants it more? And I love that excitement. And that's why I love swimming. There's, there's so many different reasons. Like I wish I could distill it down to one thing just to package it nicely. But one of them is definitely because I love representing Team USA and then see how far we can take swimming. It is crazy how fast all events have gotten, which is just 
what makes the sport so fun to be a part of and, and in my opinion, fun to watch. What's your most memorable Olympic moment as a viewer? As a viewer? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Um, 100% hands down, 2008, the four by one freestyle relay. Basically, we were like, yeah, we're getting a silver medal. And at about 50 meters, we were piling on each other. We're like, yeah, USA. And at the end, we just like kind of looked at each other, shocked. Still today, when I think about that event, I get chills. I got to go with a different one. Um, my Dorado tuner back in 2016. Every single tweet was like all caps, like, my Dorado did it, did it, did it. That's when we knew that the USA was firing on all cylinders at that meet. Summer of 2008, the men's 100 meter butterfly, Michael Phelps outtouched Kavik by one one hundredth of a second by a fingernail. I have never felt more American and more patriotic in my life. That bird. I don't even know what kind of bird it is. There is definitely a huge, I call it a perspective shift. There's not like this negative drive, like what is gonna happen if I don't win? What is gonna happen if I don't make the Olympics? Oh, my life is gonna be over. Like I could definitely see like, you know, my mind would go to those places sometimes 2012 and 2016 when I really expected to make the team. And it, you know, now I will absolutely be super sad. <laughs> no doubt about it. But like, I feel like that that fear of failing is is a little bit of a weight that that pulls you back and really there's just like a, a level of like gratitude for for being there um that that has replaced that that fear of failure and you know i think that being diagnosed with cancer is the reason why that happened the fact that i'm on close surveillance doesn't change my approach to trials i mean my approach to trials has to be swim as fast as possible and get myself on the olympic team but I mean, I still have an MRI and a blood test on Monday. <laughs> you know, based off of those results, I could be say canceling my upcoming trips and saying, "Hey, sorry, I can't go. I have to start chemo next week." Um, so those—that's kind of the reality that you face when you're dealing with cancer. The trials have been postponed, so I am 100% committed and planning on competing at Olympic trials next summer for the 2021 games. Even though pools and gyms are closed, we're trying our very best. My goals still stay the same. I still want to make my fifth Olympics, and it doesn't matter if it was next year, two years, three years, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm, that's my goal.